Grain length um, is the next thing we could look at. Uh, so this is basically what's determining our grain length. Well, that, yeah, well, that, there's two things, I suppose. One is uh, this bit here, um, and then this bit up here, uh, 200, is telling us how fast to play back that grain length. So basically, in order to get it to play back 200 milliseconds at uh, in, in over the time of 200 milliseconds, we've got to tell it send uh, 200 milliseconds here, which defines the time, and this one is a multiplier, which is determining how how much of the file to play back. Um, <coughs> so um, I'm going to use another multi-slider object uh, in exactly the same way. So I'm just going to copy this one. Oops, not patch. Um, and this time I'm going to change the range myself. So if I uh, come down to here, you can make a decision as to how long your grains might conceivably be. Um, I'm going to make mine a maximum of uh, 5,000 milliseconds in length, which means I'm I could be working in a kind of more brassage kind of way, um, than perhaps a, a kind of strictly granular way. Um, but I think that can make things more interesting if you want to use longer grains in order to make smoother sounds. So um, yeah, I've made a maximum of, of 5,000 milliseconds, and of course all I need to do. Uh, in the first instance, at least, is to send it to this inlet here. Actually, I'll move this up here. Um, <clears throat> and that will determine our grain length. Uh, but of course, we also need to say um, how long it's going to take to read through that. Otherwise, it's going to change pitch every time I change the length. So um, to do that, I will... Oops, I will need to make this a variable, this 200 milliseconds here a variable. And of course, to do that, I would put in dollar $1. Um, <clears throat> and because I therefore can't simply press this now, uh, I will send the information from the duration slider into the right-hand inlet of an integer object, which will store that information. Uh, so that it's not, you know, because if I were to send it directly to here, uh, then it would, um, then it would trigger that, uh, trigger that event every time I move the, the duration slider, which I don't want. So I'm going to put it into an integer object to store it until I want it, and then I'll use a bang or a button object to trigger the uh, that event. So now I can say, okay, well, actually, I'll put a number number object. There, so we can see. So our, well, we said before our length would be 200 milliseconds. I've got about 216 there. Um, so, oops, I'm sending it there again. And I can make it a shorter grain, or a longer grain. I'll make it three milliseconds. We'll see this counting now from the appropriate uh, length. So we now have grain position. So I'll move this up to here. Oops. And we have grain length. So I can move it up to here. Sorry, this is a bit of a messy patch now. Let's neaten it up a bit. Um, so the next thing we might want to uh, add is a means of transposition. And if you want to transpose a sound normally, so if you're using a groove object, um, then what you would do is to multiply the playback rate of that sound by a specified amount, uh, which would be, uh, for example, um, if you wanted it to play back at normal speed, you'd, you'd tell it to play back at, at 1. Uh, if you wanted it to play back at twice the speed, you'd tell it twice. Uh, if you wanted it to play back at half the speed, you'd send it 0 0.5. So that's fairly uh, straightforward. Um, what we want to do is to, um, to dictate the time over which um, the play object reads back 
um, the duration that you've specified. Um, so obviously that again we need to go back to this um, this parameter here um, or at least this argument here this uh, variable <coughs> so that because this is what tells it how fast to read through we want it to to read through slower if we want it to play um, lower and quicker if we want it to play um, higher um, well that that sort of goes against what we've got here because if we want it to play higher then we'd want it to play back over um, a shorter period which means that for example if we wanted to play back over half the time we would need to send it a value of 0 0.5 if we wanted it to play back over double the time we would need to spend send a value of 2 um, so that's that's kind of going to go against as I say what we've got here um, so I mean that's just a matter of doing a little bit of math um, but ultimately we want to send a multiplication value here and send zero point so that we can work in floats that's all right but as I say we need to do something with this value before it goes into here um, so basically what we need to do is to uh, do a um, exclamation mark divide uh, <coughs> which gives us a, if you remember, um, a division object with the inlets reversed. And if I put in a value of 1 there, then if I send it a value of 0 0.5, then it gives me a value out of 2. If I send it a value of 2, then I get a value of 0 0.5, which is exactly what I want. So I can now send that into here, oops, and hopefully I'll play back at one speed to begin with, just to make sure it's working. Oh yeah, I had to restart the patch because um, it was playing, playing up. Uh, that was Max playing up, not my patch. So I can uh, specify a grain length of say 275 and a grain position say somewhere here. Again. Um, and if I wanted to play back at twice the speed, oh, of course I need to send this value again, don't I? Yeah. Um, yes, uh, I forgot. Um, that of course, right hand inlet of that is not going to give us anything until we change the left hand inlet again. Um, a way of doing that is to use the pack object, which is P A K. And uh, if I do that, um, pack operates like pack, as in P-A-C-K, but um, it will send output whenever you send anything to any inlet. So all of these inlets are hot. Notice that that one's red and this one's red. Um, so if I send that now to here and send this one to here um, and change this as well as changing this. Again, and it will change without me having to send anything to the left-hand inlet. And remember that uh, if you if you send two values to the left-hand inlet of um, a uh, an arithmetic operator, um, then it sends the left-hand inlet or the left-hand part of that message to uh, the left-hand inlet, and the second part of that message or the right-hand part of that um, message to the right-hand inlet. Anyway, that's worked. Oops. So that should now play. Oh, come on. So half half the uh, the um, half pitch, which is what we want, um, is now playing back half pitch, and twice pitch is now playing back twice pitch, etc. So that's working. I'm going to stop there um, and uh, carry on in another video.